Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. I'm Vinny Politan, live from Orlando, sitting in for Dr. Drew. Tonight, the prosecution says they will call two more witnesses, Cindy Anthony's old co-workers. Now, will they be able to prove that she lied about searching for chloroform on the family computer? Last week, we were all astounded when Cindy took the stand and claimed she, not Casey, searched for the term chloroform. Take a look. Did you input the words into the Google search engine, how to make chloroform? I don't recall putting in how to make chloroform, but I did Google search chloroform, and we talked about it in my deposition. Were you on that website 84 times? I was on it several times. Were you on that website 84 times? I don't know. I don't know. Did you do 84 searches for the effects of chlorophyll on your animals? I didn't do 84 searches of anything. All right, Cindy was working full time back then, and the prosecution hammered her on the stand. Was she at work or did she go home without clocking out? Were you home on March 17th of 2008 between 1.43 and 1.55 p.m.? If those computer entries were made, then I made them. If you wanted to, you could go and find out if, in fact, you left work on March 17th of 2008, even though your records reflect that you didn't. No, I don't think so. They won't let you in the door? No, that's not, that's not the reason. The reason is because I had a working password and I was an employee, and only I would know through my emails what time I left, and no one had a password to my emails, and I'm sure all those things have been lost by now. So is Cindy Anthony lying to save her daughter Casey? Now, yesterday, the prosecution filed a disclosure for two rebuttal witnesses They'll take the stand once the defense rests. They are two employees from the health services company, Gentiva, a senior VP and general counsel at the company, and a lead technical specialist. We welcome back our two guests, Judge Alex Frere, host of the syndicated TV show, Judge Alex, and criminal defense attorney Mark Iglosh. Okay, how about it? I mean, we're looking ahead now to the rebuttal case, which will happen right after uh, the defense case. Uh, can these women, not these women, but these folks from Gentiva come into court and prove that Cindy Anthony lied on the stand. Absolutely, and boy, do I hope so. I, I have nothing against either of the Anthonys. Their behavior I take exception to as to what went on in court. But I mean, they lost their granddaughter. I, I appreciate that. But w coming into a courtroom and committing what I think was a gross miscarriage of justice by lying to save the daughter, while some people can appreciate, they understand, it's fundamentally wrong, and I'm so pleased that they've listed these witnesses. I, Judge I, Alex, I, I think he alluded to something called perjury, right? Isn't yeah, that what it's absolutely. Called? If the prosecution wants to pursue per perjury charges, they certainly can. She I, certainly, I hope they don't. Th My they, goodness. I have, I'll tell you, the number of times I've seen people lie on the stand, and I have, I, I don't think I ever in 10 years on the criminal court bench in Miami saw the prosecution pursue a perjury charge. The thing is, they can. They can. I totally understand why she's doing that. I mean, it's her child, and she's already lost a granddaughter, and she doesn't want to lose a daughter. Certainly, like Mark said, I don't condone it. But I understand it. And then I, maybe I've been become it, desensitized over it because so many people lie on the stand. Does the jury understand, understand it? And, and with these rebuttal witnesses, you can put some proof on the table uh, that she may not have been 100% honest on the stand. But don't you think the jury gets it? Because we're all kind of feeling like, you know, she wasn't 100% truthful about it. But we understand why. Won't the jury do the same thing? Here's what and I maybe get. cut her a break? Here's what I get. We're not on the jury, and there's a reason why we're not on the jury. We have followed this case. We know too much. And we don't I live in, uh, you know... This part of Florida, either. That's a good point, That's a good Vinny. Point. The other thing is, you've got, I was in the courtroom and I was watching. Juror number nine, which I, I, I've got to talk about, this guy is taking almost as many notes as the court reporter. He's writing everything down ferociously. The ones in the front are just kind of looking. If anyone's going to get it, I think it's the ones in the front who are kind of looking, seeing everything, knowing that your memory doesn't get better with age like wine, like she alleged. I mean, that was a magical moment for her. The prosecution. No, no, no judge. I like, the juror, I like the jurors that don't take notes, and this is why. I know it's a complicated case. I come from New Jersey, where I practice law. They weren't allowed to take notes, and I just found they paid closer attention. It's like when I was in class. I never took notes in class. Did you take <laughs> notes in law school? 
He I got the to. notes afterwards from someone to. else. Oh, he, he copied the notes from the guy next to him. Exactly. But I agree with you because I paid attention some, to the professor. Sometimes when a juror is taking notes, they miss the very next thing. And in a case, especially a case like this where you're getting hit with evidence all the time, the very next thing you miss might be the crucial piece of evidence in the case. But as far as her memory is concerned, her memory is unbelievable. She talked about the fact when they asked her, neck breaking, did you search for neck breaking? She said, no, but I remember a pop-up ad that uh, talked about uh, a skateboarding. skateboarding. I remember that. Breaking activity. I don't remember a pop-up ad from my computer yesterday. You're going to tell me that she remembers a pop-up ad from two years ago that popped up on her computer? So I what, think she what lost is, the jury Cindy at that Anthony point. Now? Is Cindy Anthony a prosecution witness or defense witness? Always has been a defense witness. It only takes one juror, just one to think, you know what, they didn't contradict what she had to say yet, and so maybe she did do the chloroform searches like she alleged. I don't buy it. It takes one. You're looking for one to hang this jury up so when you do retry this case, you can do it right the first time and allege that this wasn't about molestation, it wasn't about a tragic accident. You kind of just put it out there and argue reasonable doubt like they should have from the start. If they hang the jury in this case, the retrial will be completely different. There's no way the defense, From the defense perspective. There's no way Absolutely. the defense makes the same mistake twice. Or will the same lawyers be doing it? No, probably not. Yeah. Well, here, for Cindy Anthony, do you think that she's a defense witness also? Because don't forget the 911 call. This case starts because Cindy Anthony confronts her daughter Casey. But she wasn't then. She wasn't a ni she wasn't a defense witness before there was ever a defense. That's she didn't know what was going on with her daughter. But well, once she, she you, you guys don't believe that she wants to find she wants some justice here for her granddaughter. I, I believe she. I believe Th that. But she, that justice not being death for her daughter, I, I but justice I being true. It's not about justice. It's no. about whether they prove the case or not. And I think that. Uh, but what does she want? What is this she doesn't grandmother? Want to she does she not want, want to lose her daughter. And she wants two words as opposed to one. She wants not guilty. You and think you, she looked, wants Casey to walk out of that courtroom? 100%. Absolutely. And she showed that she's willing to do whatever it takes but, to get there. I, mean, look, I think she's sophisticated though. enough to understand what she was doing with the chloroform search went to the first charge, went to first degree, which impacts the death penalty. I know that she doesn't want her daughter on death you row. You think she wants her daughter to do life? Well, I, you know, I don't know about life. Do you think she wants to do 30 years? Do you think I, she I, wants her daughter to leave prison when she's 56 years old? I think she may very well so. want that. She loves that so. little Vinny, girl, with Kaylee. all due respect, I think you drank a what big cup to of gullible tonight. You, you don't, don't think, think Cindy, that she's willing to lie for Cindy, her daughter? You don't think Cindy thinks about what happened to her granddaughter, Kaylee, how she was tossed but in the woods, yes. was eaten by animals? And then animals. she made a decision. There comes a time where there's a fork in the road, and she went down that path. And I for agree that, with Mark on that, she should be prosecuted. She, I do. It's I not a question it. of whether we think she should be prosecuted. It's a question of whether a mother wants to lose her daughter and granddaughter, and she doesn't. That's she, an empty Christmas she'll deal table. With, she'll deal is. with her issues All later, right. but she wants her out.